Are faithful Catholics weaponizing the Eucharist? Or are people who are masquerading as Catholics using this for political theater? Let me ask you the question. Do you think that Joe Biden, a self-proclaimed lifelong Catholic who attends mass most Sundays we've recently learned, should be allowed to receive the Holy Eucharist when he presents himself for communion, despite his lifelong goal of encouraging, celebrating the wholesale slaughter of children. Do you think that that is something that is opposed to one another? His views and his actions and the teachings of Holy Mother Church. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. If you are returning, I'm so happy that you came back. If you saw my video last week, let me know down below what you thought. And if you didn't get to see it, I'll link it for you in the description box below. And I hope that you will take a look at that video and let me know your thoughts. If you are new, welcome. My name is Dina Barca and I am a Catholic wife. Let's have a little thought experiment because I think sometimes when people hear the word abortion, they shut down and they don't hear anything else in the conversation. So let's replace abortion and being supportive of abortion or a woman's right to choose, I believe is the tagline that we go with. Let's exchange the word abortion for a different A word. Let's go with adultery. So you know that I'm a Catholic wife. I come on here and I talk about things that are important to me as a traditional Catholic, as a wife. What if I decide that I believe that other Catholic wives should have the ability and option and should be encouraged because it's a woman's right to choose to have a marriage, but also have extramarital relations. Because love is love, and what if she meets someone else? And she doesn't want to get divorced. I mean, that's not what she wants, but she just wants to have something else on the side. And I encourage her to do that. And I downplay the gravity of that mortal sin. And I tell her and encourage her to continue in that lifestyle because I don't want to offend her and I don't want her to be upset with me and I don't want to have a backbone and tell her she's engaging in is a mortal sin. She is placing her eternal soul in jeopardy and she needs to repent, get to confession and get right with the Lord so she can be reconciled back to Holy Mother Church. If I encouraged her, you should stay in your sin. Don't go get a confession. Love is love. It's just love. It's what you want to do. You have the right as a woman to choose to have a husband, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, six other people in your relationship. Whatever you want to do in this day and age is perfectly acceptable. And I'm not going to tell you the consequences of that, but I'm a faithful Catholic and I go to mass every Sunday. Wouldn't you think that there was something diabolical with that? If you are a person who is holding yourself out and saying, yes, I am a faithful Catholic. I hold to the teachings of Holy Mother Church for myself. But for you, I don't really care that much about you and what you're doing in your life. So I'm going to not be charitable and tell you that, you know what, what you're doing is not in line with what the teachings of the church are. It's not what Christ has said we need to be doing as his followers. And I'm going to go ahead and encourage you to stay in that sin because that's how much I care about you. See, this is where there's a disconnect for me. If a person like a Joe Biden, a Nancy Pelosi, any person who wants to hold themselves out and use the church and hide behind the church and say, I believe these things for myself. I care about my soul and I care about my family, but you, I don't really care about because I can use it for a political gain. I can use it to seem like I am just so inclusive to all people. And I want everybody to know that love is love and there are no consequences to the choices we make. I don't know how people like that live with themselves. I truly don't. I don't know how you can be a person with that size of a platform and tell people that there are not consequences, that you can sit there and say, yes, I follow Jesus Christ. I belong to his church, the one true church. And I know that this is a teaching that is against the church, but I'm still going to encourage people to do it. And also I am going to present myself for Holy Communion. I don't know how you have the audacity to do that. I have a small YouTube channel. I have about 8,000 subscribers at this point. I put out videos pretty much every single week and I take the things that I say so seriously. And I would not place myself in mortal sin by encouraging you to sin and telling you something that was opposed to the teachings of the church. 
I'm not perfect. I could absolutely make mistakes on this channel. And if I do, I pray in charity that you would care enough about me to say, Dina, you got that part wrong. Please look into that. This is what the correct teaching is or what have you. To care enough about another person and stop pretending that you care when what you're encouraging them to do is something that has eternal consequences to their soul. And we have the most powerful man in the free world saying, I am a faithful Catholic and abortion should be legal. Women should absolutely be able to kill another person. There is something diabolical in that. And the fact that we have men who have been ordained, Catholic priests and bishops who will not say firmly, it is against the teachings of the church to kill children. It is against the teachings of the church to kill anyone. It is against the teachings of the church to engage in behaviors that are sinful. They hide behind wanting everyone to be included. Everyone gets a seat at the table. Everybody gets to receive the Eucharist. As if it were not the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, they treat the Eucharist as if it's just a participation trophy. You show up at Mass, well, guess what? Come on down. You get to have the Eucharist. This is a fundamental teaching of the church that abortion is a grave sin. And to encourage people to have abortions, to not have the backbone, to not have enough care for another soul, to tell them the truth of Jesus Christ and what his church teaches, that has to be of the evil one. There is no other explanation for it. As faithful Catholics, as true faithful Catholics, we can't afford to be quiet. We can't afford to be silent and not have the courage to stand up, whatever your platform is. It might just be talking to somebody at your job or in your family, at your dining room table. It doesn't have to be on a YouTube channel. But if you have a voice and you can get out in front of people and share the truth with them, I think if you're a person who professes Christ to be a person who belongs to Christ's church and you hide and you don't tell other people who may be in a situation that is putting their eternal souls in peril, I know that we will be judged for that. And I don't want that on my soul and I don't want it on yours. So if you have the opportunity to say something and tell someone, this is not a teaching of the church. If you have removed yourself from friendship with the Lord, if you are in mortal sin, sin of choice, pick whichever one you want. You cannot present yourself for Holy Communion. It's just a, a fundamental basic teaching of the church. And for any priest or bishop to blur the lines and make it even more confusing once again for the laity to not be just matter of fact, this is the teaching if you choose with your free will to do something opposed to the teachings of the church, opposed to what Jesus Christ has told us, he requires of us, do not present yourself for Holy Communion. This is, you know, just like in a recent interview with Cardinal Lorenzo, he was asked, should politicians who support abortion be allowed to receive Holy Communion? And I'll read to you his quote. Do you really need a Cardinal from the Vatican to answer that? Get the children for First Communion and say to them, Someone votes for the killing of unborn babies and says, I voted for that. I will vote for that every time. And these babies are killed, not one or two, but in millions. And that person says, I'm a practicing Catholic. Should that person receive communion next Sunday? The children for first communion will answer that at a drop of a hat. You don't need a cardinal to answer that. I would say it's not faithful Catholics who have weaponized the Eucharist. It is not faithful priests and bishops who have been more afraid of offending the Lord than offending Joe Biden and his ilk, of telling them the truth. It is a mercy. It is a charity for a priest or bishop to withhold the Eucharist. We eat and drink condemnation on our soul when we partake in the Eucharist in an unworthy manner. Now, I saw someone recently post, and I think it was an Episcopalian minister or whatever, and they said, we're all unworthy. So, I mean, how can, can they do that? And it, was, it just strikes me as funny that people who have a fundamentally flawed view of Christ, his church, who are Protestant, have the temerity to tell the church, well, it's, what's the big deal? Just hand out the Eucharist like it's goldfish crackers. 
they don't have the real presence of Christ. So whatever their communion offering is, of course, give it to everybody because it means nothing. It means no more than the goldfish crackers in my pantry right now. But what we have as Catholics is the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. The eternal consequences of receiving the Eucharist in an unworthy manner should scare you right into confession to get yourself back in line with the Lord. Because when we are not in line with the Lord and his teachings, we have aligned with the evil one. We have chosen the evil one. When we are in mortal sin, we have turned away from Christ and we are now in line with what the evil one wants. Let's just stop with this idea that Biden, Pelosi, all these social media Catholics, all these Jesuits, and let's not even get started with the liberal news media and how now they're so concerned with the Eucharist and people not being able to receive it. Spare me, okay? These self-proclaimed Catholics, they know good and well that they should not be presenting themselves for Holy Communion. But this is an opportunity for political theater. This is an opportunity to twist and use the church as a way for them to grandstand and to be able to manipulate bishops and priests and Catholic laity who do not know the faith to thinking this has something to do with not being kind and not being inclusive to poor Joe Biden. Come on, give me a break. He knows that he is in mortal sin by encouraging abortion. This isn't some obscure teaching of the church that no one knows about and he has fallen into. He knows good and well that if you are a Catholic and you are supporting abortion, you are in mortal sin. Don't present yourself for communion. As faithful Catholics, it is our obligation to speak out, to help people understand what the teachings of the church are. It's sad that we live in a day and age when we cannot just blindly look to priests and bishops for guidance. Educate yourself. Look into these matters. Find out what the church teaches. And if you have an interaction with someone who is a wayward Catholic, is a Catholic who does not understand the teachings of the church, that is an opportunity. That is a moment, I think, from God for you to step up and be his voice to someone, to help them not eat and drink condemnation on their soul because they're in mortal sin and they are receiving the Lord unworthily. Let's not be weak Catholics. Let's not take the easy path and hide behind being a Catholic and not standing up and saying, I personally wouldn't do it, but I don't want to take away someone else's ability to kill their own child. Have courage. No one said being a Catholic was going to be easy. It is hard and you are going to be crucified. People are going to look at you when you say these things like you're a crazy person because it's not the popular thing to do anymore. The popular thing is to encourage sin, to let people just live in whatever state they want to be in because love is love and that is the goal. Even though true love means you sacrifice for someone else, that it might be personally painful to you. It might cost you a relationship. If you can save someone's soul by preventing them from being eternally cut off from the Lord, is it not worth what happens on this side of heaven? Is it not worth the pain and the tears of losing a relationship? If it means that person might turn away from the evil one and turn back to Christ. It's a charade that they are engaging in, that we are trying to weaponize the Eucharist. It is of great charity, love, and compassion when a priest denies someone the Eucharist because they are not worthy to receive it, because they are in mortal sin. Please pray for our holy and courageous priests who are doing God's work here, who are unafraid to stand between evil and us and to teach us what we need to know. Pray for our holy priests and pray even harder for the priests and bishops who are encouraging people to go outside the teachings of the church, to downplay sin, to place their very souls in danger. I just wanted to thank you for spending this time with me. I encourage you to pray for Joe Biden and any Catholic who is struggling with the teachings of the church, that they will be educated and corrected and they will return to Holy Mother Church. I pray that he will return to the church and stop this crusade, the evil that is abortion. If you are interested in receiving my videos before I make them live on Friday afternoons, if you would email me at a Catholic wife at gmail.com. 
I will email you a link before my videos go live. So if that is something that is interesting to you, go ahead and send me an email and I will make sure you get my videos before everyone else does. Hope you will consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you next Friday. Take care and God bless.